my name is John Detra, and I'm Professor of Neurology and Radiology at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm also Director of the Center for Functional Neuroimaging here. My presentation is on incidental findings in MRI research on the human brain. The information and opinions in the presentation were derived from the medical literature and also from a multidisciplinary workshop on incidental findings we held here at Penn a couple of years ago. And, uh, during this presentation, I will touch on three issues. Firstly, what are incidental findings in MRI research, and why is there an ethical issue about them? Secondly, are incidental findings a risk or benefit of MRI research? And finally, how should one deal with incidental findings? So first, what are incidental findings in MRI research, and why is there an ethical issue about them? Magnetic resonance images are derived from radio frequency signals that readily penetrate tissue. Because MRI uses no ionizing radiation and does not require injection of any exogenous contrasts or other tracers, it is considered entirely non-invasive. There are also no known risks of cumulative exposure to MRI, so MRI can be used for serial studies of brain structure and function during development, aging, pathological processes, or even learning. The only absolute contraindications to MRI are the presence of ferrous metal in the brain or eye, or the presence of certain electronic implants, such as a pacemaker. In clinical applications, MRI is even considered safe during pregnancy. In research applications, MRI is typically classified as an insignificant risk device. The main source of morbidity associated with non-contrast MRI is the risk of injury from metallic projectiles that can be sucked into the magnet bore. This has resulted in at least one reported death in a clinical study. However, in principle, this risk can readily be controlled using operational procedures to ensure that no ferrous objects enter the MRI room. The non-invasiveness and versatility of MRI has also made it an increasingly popular modality for brain research. The relative ease and low cost of imaging regional brain function with bold fMRI as compared to prior PET methods spurred an explosion in its use as a research tool in basic and clinical neuroscience for studying brain structure, brain function, and brain behavior relationships. Although the MRI procedure itself carries little risk, MRI scanning is capable of revealing previously unsuspected neuropathology in subjects who are scanned for research purposes. Detecting brain pathology is the expressed in intent of clinical MRI examinations, but it is really not the objective of research MRI, in particular when this research is carried out in healthy subjects. When some type of unexpected abnormality is found, it is called an incidental finding. Although most incidental findings may have little or no clinical significance, some incidental findings may have immediate implications for the medical status of the person in whom they are found. Incidental findings are commonly recognized in the setting of clinical care and are therefore an accepted consequence of medical evaluation. But the widespread use of sensitive medical testing, such as MRI, for research into normal brain function is really unprecedented and has greatly increased the likelihood of an incidental medical finding in otherwise healthy research subjects. The exact incidence of incidental findings in otherwise healthy people is not known and depends on demographic factors, such as the age of the study population, as well as the extent of diagnostically relevant imaging that is carried out. However, a number of studies now suggest, suggest that unexpected abnormalities may be found in about 20% of diagnostic quality MRI scans from normal subjects and somewhat higher in elderly subjects. Incidental findings requiring urgent medical evaluation are much less frequent, probably occurring in less than 1% of healthy subjects. Although 1% may seem like a small number, a single research MRI system is capable of th several thousand studies each year. Second, are incidental findings a risk or a benefit of MRI research? One of the most basic tenets of human subjects research is that it carries a positive risk-benefit ratio. 
Let's neglect for a moment the small risk of an incidental finding. As long as MRI research is carried out in subjects without contraindications and in an environment that carefully excludes projectiles, and as long as the research has some merit, a positive risk-benefit ratio is virtually guaranteed. Note that this benefit of MRI research is usually not to the research subject themselves, but rather to society based on the new knowledge that is antici anticipated to be gained from the study. The benefit to the individual research subject is usually limited to a small honorarium provided to offset the time and expense of participating in the study. This was the present premise under which nearly all human MRI research was carried out until recently. Now let's consider the risk-benefit ratio, including the possibility of an incidental finding. While minor incidental findings have the potential to cause some anxiety or stress, very significant findings have the potential to alter life expectancy and, and, and insurability, as well as mandating additional testing or interventions that also carry risk. For example, the finding of a tumor or aneurysm may well lead to the need for extensive medical evaluation and treatment, including neurosurgical procedures. Accordingly, the possibility of an incidental finding must be considered as a potential risk of participating in research involving brain MRI. The risk-benefit for participating in MRI research is also therefore clearly altered by the recognition that an incidental finding represents a risk to the research subject of participating in the study. On the other hand, if a life-threatening incidental abnormality is discovered and treated, it could also be considered as a benefit of participating in the study. It turns out that although most research MRI consent forms include very specific verbiage stating that the study is not intended for diagnostic purposes, many subjects volunteering for research MRI nevertheless expect that clinically significant abnormalities would be found. It has been argued that to minimize the risk-benefit ratio of research MRI, researchers should try to maximize the potential benefit of discovering and disclosing a clinically significant incidental finding. But the problem with this argument is that many findings have uncertain clinical significance, and an assessment of the significance often cannot be made based on the imaging data alone. So in trying to maximize the benefit of a significant finding, researchers may also be maximizing the unnecessary stress and anxiety of a finding with uncertain consequences. So in the end, while incidental findings are clearly a risk of human MRI research, it is more difficult to assess to what extent they are really a benefit as well. Finally, how should we deal with incidental findings in MRI research? Of course, MRI scanning per se does not lead to incidental findings. Rather, incidental findings are discovered through visual inspection or other forms of image analysis. The likelihood of discovering an incidental finding depends on the amount of diagnostic quality imaging that is carried out in this study, as well as the diagnostic skills of the individuals who are involved in the data acquisition and analysis. In neuroimaging research, there is considerable variability in both the extent and diagnostic quality of the imaging data that is obtained and in the diagnostic skills of the research team who are looking at it. Some studies are carried out by medical teams that include neurologists and neuroradiologists, and the data acquisition includes a lot of clinically sensitive imaging. Other studies may be carried out by psychologists and include only one basic set of structural images. This variability makes it difficult to recommend a uniform approach for handling incidental findings in MRI research studies. One possible approach is to require a basic set of diagnostically useful imaging data for each research study and to mandate review of these data by a skilled interpreter, such as a neuroradiologist. This approach is operationally appealing in that each study can be managed the same way from the standpoint of detecting incidental findings. However, this approach is also more costly and likely to yield the highest number of incidental findings many of which may have uncertain clinical significance and simply cause unnecessary stress and anxiety. An alternative approach links
links the extent of data acquisition and scrutiny for incidental findings to the intent of the research MRI study. Using this type of approach, studies carried out in healthy volunteers with no clinical hypothesis or intent do not require any formal review for incidental findings. In contrast, studies involving clinical hypotheses and clinical pop populations would be reviewed more systematically. This dichotomized approach is also very consistent with research subjects' reasonable expectations. As long as healthy volunteers for a non-clinical study truly understand that a research MRI study is not intended for diagnostic purposes and will not be reviewed as such, there should be little or no expectation of any medical value to the study, particularly if it is being carried out in a non-clinical environment, such as the Department of Psychology. In contrast, clinical populations studied in a clinical setting and recruited because of their known neuropathology might reasonably expect their diagnosis to be at least confirmed and any medically significant deviations to be detected. Indeed, a doctor-patient relationship is essentially implied in the study design, even if the investigator is not the research subject's personal physician. Of course, even if no special scrutiny is given to MRI data from healthy volunteers acquired for non-clinical purposes, there remains the possibility that study personnel will notice an incidental abnorma abnormality. Accordingly, all research MRI facilities must include some mechanism for timely access to this expertise. There is clearly an ethical obligation to inform research participants about information of likely health consequences, and the possibility of such notification should also be described as part of the consent procedure for all research MRI studies. The principal investigator of the study is ultimately responsible for ensuring that this disclosure is made in a timely fashion, though this responsibility may be deferred to another study investigator with greater clinical expertise. It is less clear what action should be taken in response to incidental findings with questionable or unlikely clinical significance, since the stress and anxiety generated by disclosure may outweigh any potential health benefits. One very important and poorly recognized concept concerning incidental findings is that their significance may be difficult or impossible to determine in isolation. It may depend critically on the patient's medical history and symptoms. For example, if a subject has had a history of fluctuating neurological symptoms, a few small lesions in the white matter could mean that the subject has multiple sclerosis, but without those symptoms it might mean nothing of any consequence. As a result of this, the significance of an incidental finding for any individual is really best determined by their personal physician in the context of their complete medical history. Furthermore, the process of evaluating and managing an incidental finding may take months or years and is also optimally carried out under the direction of the individual's personal physician. To respect the privacy of research subjects, information about incidental findings should be given directly to the subjects themselves or to their guardian. It should then be up to the subject and their guardian to determine whether to pursue it further through their health care provider though the investigator should endeavor to, insist, to assist in this process to whatever extent possible. Some have suggested that research subjects should be offered the opportunity to opt out of being notified of incidental findings. However, this approach places the investigator in a difficult position of judging what severity of findings would prompt the confirmatory contact and how hard to push the subject to reconsider their opt-out position. It is not clear that it is really necessary or even desirable to allow subjects to opt out of notification. In the absence of evidence that subject recruitment for MRI research would be dramatically reduced unless subjects are offered the opt-out alternative, a more straightforward solution to this issue would be to have such subjects opt out of being research subjects altogether. In conclusion, the potential for an incidental finding of definite or possible clinical significance is a predictable risk of participating in MRI research and procedures for detecting or verifying incidental findings and disclosing them to research subjects must be included in research protocol and consent processes. 
Incidental findings can adversely impact subjects by causing anxiety or requiring additional evaluation and treatment with additional risk. Although there is some potential for health benefit if a life-threatening finding is observed and successfully treated, the clinical significance of most incidental findings is uncertain, so it is unclear to what extent screening for incidental findings is truly a benefit for the subject in participating in the study. This presentation is focused on the issues of incidental findings in MRI research of the human brain, but of course, these same issues also apply to research in other parts of the body.